you're upset, you're in pain, and this person just simply doesn't care. They don't even batter an eyelid. They don't offer any support, and they just do it more and more and more. Watch this video, I'm gonna talk about why the narcissist takes pleasure in your pain. Hello and welcome back. I hope that you're all doing really well. So I know I'm gonna be touching upon this kind of dark subject of why the narcissist finds pleasure in your pain. Let's just think about that statement. The narcissist takes pleasure in your pain. That is sadistic, okay? That is evil. That it, I don't know what other words to describe it in, but it is not okay. The narcissist will find pleasure in your pain. They will, at some point, orchestrate this pain so they can watch you suffer. And this makes them really happy. It's kind of like they draw energy from your pain. And that's indeed what they are doing. Can you see how abusive this actually is? This isn't okay for someone to do this. And I find that it's actually kind of chilling to think of someone doing that. They will put or orchestrate situations and experiences for you where you will feel this. You will feel this pain and they will draw supply from it. They will draw so much validation from your pain. So you see, the pain aspect for the narcissist is them knowing that actually you feel something for them. Because this is all about emotion. This is all about how, trying to understand how you feel about them. So if they're initiating an emotional response within you, that is making them feel alive. That is making them feel good that you are feeling something for them. You know, they don't understand positive emotions. Although they do feel them, but at fleeting moments, but they concentrate more on the negative. So when you are feeling something negative, they can relate to that. They can understand that feeling. So this is why they make you feel these things because they want to know that, that, they can, that you feel it too. They want to know or they want to see that you are feeling this this pain that they feel, that they put so much attention and energy and focusing on that you are feeling that. This is why, for example, they use the triangulation. They make you feel jealous, you know, because they put three people in this dynamic and they will try and make you feel jealous because that is what they feel. That is the kind of emotion that they recognize. So they can only relate to that. They're not understanding happiness, joy, because they don't get that. They don't understand it. They don't feel it. They do very fleetingly, but they don't embody that feeling or that emotion. So when they are making you cry, when they are saying awful things, when they're making you feel jealous, that is what they understand because that is what they hyper focus on is that their life. All right. If you take this back to their childhood, all right, when they were children, they didn't feel joy. They didn't feel happiness. They didn't feel love. So they don't understand that because when someone doesn't feel something or they feel very fleeting moments of it, they don't really embody that emotion. They don't really embody that feeling. So when it does happen to them, they can't make sense of it. So this is why making you feel negative is something that they understand because this is what they feel. This is what they feel all the time. So they can relate to that. It doesn't mean that it bonds you in some way. It trauma bonds you to the narcissist because one moment they pretend to be nice and they're, they are gaslighting you. You know, they are mirroring you and love bombing you. But those feelings, those things that they are doing, they don't feel it. They don't understand those emotions. So they can't embody them. They can't really like feel them, experience them. When they are making you sad, when they're making you cry, feeling jealous, feeling absolutely awful about yourself, then they do. 
The narcissist was constructed emotionally in this way. So they are never going to understand how you are feeling because they can't relate to you emotionally, which is why they then get you to trauma bond to them. Because if you're trauma bonded to them, it means that you stay, you're easier to control. And this is about the control is about making you feel a certain way so that they then can draw supply from you. That's what you are. You are someone that they use as a toy. They can orchestrate how you are going to feel. They decide how you get to feel. So if you're feeling negative, if you if they make you cry, this is where they're drawing their energy from. This is what is making them feel alive. They feel good about doing that. Because as children, all right, this was done to them as kids, okay? They were made to feel like this. And this is how they then understand what life is about. They don't have feelings of positivity. They don't have feelings of happiness. They only feel the negative parts because that is what their childhood was like. That is the trauma of their childhood. So all they're doing is reenacting their childhood. They, you can't teach someone how to be happy. They pretend, don't get me wrong, they mirror, they pretend, but none of that, what is happening at the beginning of your relationship with them is actually real. Like it's not because if it was real, then this would carry on throughout the relationship, but it doesn't. It only happens in increments, which is why then you trauma bond to that person. It happens in little parts because they need to get you on site. They need to draw supply from somewhere. They need to get attention from somewhere. So you're not going to stay if you're made to feel absolutely awful all the time. If there are little bits that you are, that, you know, they put breadcrumbs in front of you and you're feeling good and they're telling you what you want to hear, then you're going to stay because they realize that's how you manipulate people. You tell them what they want to hear. And so people stay because they know they, they form that you form this judgment about the narcissist that they were like this at one point, which means that they, they have got the capacity to be nice. They're not this awful monster. But as time goes on, you realize and you think, oh, OK, this person is predominantly negative and there's so much drama, there's so much chaos and nothing that I do is ever good enough for them. And that's when you realize, you see, the narcissist doesn't get into this relationship for it to last forever, even though they tell you that it will do. But they're not in this relationship for it to last forever. No, they orchestrate these situations so that they make you feel bad because in a way they also feel like, why is it that they have had to have gone through this? You didn't. So then there's this jealousy that exists and they do this especially to you so that you feel bad about yourself. So you feel awful about yourself. If you feel like that about yourself, you don't have any confidence, any self-worth. So that keeps you malleable. That keeps you easier to manipulate. And that's how they gain control over you because they know how to turn your emotions on and off. And this is very, very sadistic because it's like they want to take control of you. And by taking control of you, they can then decide when they want supply from you, when they want certain attention from you, when they want you to do a certain thing. Be under no illusion, all right? This is all calculated. They do know what they are doing. Manipulating someone, controlling someone, you do know what you're doing because you adapt your behaviors or you adapt the situation so that it works out in a certain way or in, you get the certain outcome. And that's indeed what the narcissist is doing. They know what they are doing. So it's not because they're just being horrible to you because they're stressed or something has happened. No, they are doing this because they want something from you. Remember, you are transactional. So you are there to serve a purpose. The narcissist feels that they own you. Okay, so when they own you, they own you emotionally. All right, so they feel like they can make you feel a certain way or you do something for the narcissist. You become kind of like an emotional slave for the narcissist because they then think, okay, I know what I need to say and do to make this happen. And that's what they in fact do. 
And this is sadistic because what you're doing is you're taking over that person. You know, you're, you're their slave. You do what you, what they say for you to do. Meanwhile, you're thinking, why is this person being like this to me? Like, I've not done anything to them. I've not done anything awful for them to behave in this way. But then what we do is we internalize that and think, okay, maybe we would have done A, B, and C wrong. So maybe we need to adapt and try and make this better because there is always that one person in the relationship who is the narcissist, but then you guys are the ones that are trying to, in, you know, trying to make this better. You internalize it and think it's your responsibility because you have done something to the narcissist and that you have to try and make this situation better because believe me, they'll make you feel like that. So when you see it from the outside looking in, usually, you know, after this person has left your life because you've had the, like, the brain space and the thinking space to kind of work this out, you then realize that, hold on a minute, like, I didn't do anything to deserve this. And, why, and this is why, you know, you get these feelings of anger and upset that someone would do this to you. Somebody would manipulate you in this way to make you feel like this, to make you feel like everything is your fault. But you see, that is the trick here. That is the thing. They will do this because they want you to feel bad. They want you to feel awful. They want you to cry. And the reason why they want you to feel like that is because then, you know what? You're easier to control. And this is why they leave and they come back because if they leave, then they don't have to offer you an explanation. They don't have to offer you um, an, an understanding of what has happened. They don't take responsibility, which is why they then come back like nothing has happened. And okay, let's get on with this relationship. Like, you know, everything's okay. So when someone turns their emotions on and off just like that, that isn't healthy because human beings don't do that. Like healthy human beings, you're not just able just to be sad one moment and then you're laughing or you're laughing and then crying the other moment. No, it means that you don't embody these emotions. You don't actually feel them, which is why you can flip from one to the other so quickly, which is why they're rageful in one moment and then they're telling you that they love you or they love you in one moment and then the next they're telling you how awful you are and that they have cheated on you. You see, this is what I mean. They flip from these emotions so quickly. Like that isn't okay. That's not healthy. You, you don't do that. You don't do that to another person, but yet they do. And so this just goes to show, this really just shows that actually this isn't okay. This person isn't healthy to be able to do this. You know, even sadistic behavior that they show. There's something not right. You don't do that to another human being. Why would you want to hurt another person? Which shows also that they have no empathy. They have no compassion. They don't care. What they care about is their own needs. What they care about is that, that they are getting the supply that they need. And that's really what it's about here. So I really hope this video makes sense. I really hope that this video really helps you to understand why they do this. They hyper-focus on the negative and they want you to feel it because that's how they can relate to those emotions. So guys, if you are someone that is going through this, please know that I do offer one-to-one -one consultations to help you work through this. Please see the description box below. I'm also going to be offering a mentorship for those of you who are done living small and want to elevate and want to get to the next stage of their healing. Please see the description box below. I do offer a journal club where I post every Monday. If you are interested, please see the description box below. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.